I have the, the, the distinct honor now to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Richard Vigory. And uh, Mr. Vigory, uh, you need to know, he, he went through hell and high water to get here. He, f he flew in to Charlotte last night and missed his flight this morning and finally got here this uh, late morning, early afternoon, but we're really thankful that he's here. I have known of, of Richard Vigory for some time, but I've had the privilege to meet him last year at an annual Freedom Conference that we both attended and he was a speaker at. And so I, appre I really appreciate everything he's done to promote constitutional conservative values. Many of you know that Mr. Vigory has been called the funding father of the conservative movement as a result of his pioneering the use of direct mail fundraising in the pol political spheres. His firm, American Target Advertising, has mailed over two billion letters over the past 42 years. In 1979, Time Magazine named him one of the 50 future leaders of America. His latest book, and this will, the title will tell you something about this man, Conservatives Betrayed, How George W. Bush and Other Big Government Republicans Hijacked the Conservative Cause. This book looks at how the GOP rode the support of America's conservatives to majority status, only to subsequently advance a liberal big government agenda. Mr. Vigory is the chairman of conservativehq.com. If you don't go there, I strongly encourage you to visit this website on a regular basis and sign up. His website is devoted to relaunching the conservative movement and is one I highly recommend. We are very thankful to have Mr. Vigory here, particularly considering the difficulty he had with his schedule. Mr. Vigory, welcome. Hi. Where have you been? Do you people know how, have any idea how long I've been waiting for you? I've been waiting 50 years for you people. <laughs> for 50 years. <laughs> As Mark said, for 50 years, I've been at the national level advancing the cause of liberty and freedom as best I could. And for that period of time, Periodically, people would ask me, Richard, is it too late to turn things around? Have we gone too far down the road to socialism to turn things around, save America? And I always had one answer and one answer only. And that answer was, America is very comfortable. They're like the frogs in the water being cooked slowly. And we're going to lose our country unless one thing happens. And that is if things get real bad real quick. Guess what? They, we're there, and the people are jumping out of that boiling water by the millions. And at the same time, I'd said that for 50 years, I never realized that something else was needed, and that was the arrival of the Tea Party. I understood in uh, the 1980s how we could slow the growth of government down under uh, President Reagan. Under the Gingrich Revolution, when they took Congress in 1994, I understood how we could slow it down a little bit then but I never understood how we could go back to the vision of our founders until Obama arrived and you people arrived. We now have a chance to save our country. <laughs> the, uh, and it is not a, an issue, quite frankly, of winning uh, the next election or a couple of elections. The task we have before us is, is so monumental, I suspect the vast majority of you have no idea how high a mountain we have to climb to reclaim our, our, our country and go back to the vision of our founders. Except for the military, the leadership of every major institution in America, literally every major institution in America, is arrayed against us. Higher education, lower education, Hollywood, the media, big business, Wall Street, unions, organized religion, the nonprofit community. All of these institutions have very different views and values than we do, and that's our challenge, and it's a humongous uh, task. Now, two, three, maybe sometimes four times a day, Obama is going to do something that's going to upset you, anger you, frustrate you, and that's okay. Take 30, max 40 seconds. Throw something, get angry, whatever you want to do. But after 40 seconds max, get down on your knees and thank God that Barack Obama is President of the United States. Because I know no other way to save America. 
In my opinion, we were lost as a country under the Nixons, the Fords, the Bob Doles, the George Bush 41, 43, John McCain, and it was only the arrival of you people because of Obama that we have a chance to save America. The, uh, you know, I hear these politicians, and I know an awful lot of them. I've been associated with them for 50 years at the national level. And uh, in my opinion, uh, the Republican Party is every bit as much of a problem as the Democratic Party. The Republicans lost the, the House and the Senate in 2006. They lost the White House in 2008, having nothing to do with Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and Barack Obama, had everything to do with the Republicans. They are the ones with their high spending uh, legal theft. You know, there are two types of theft out there, illegal theft. Most of those politicians, they've been caught, will be caught. They'll serve their time. That's not going to affect your children or your grandchildren's lives one iota. But what could destroy our country is the legal theft where the Republicans and the Democrats have gone about the business of uh, bribing the voters and engage in legal theft for the purpose of holding on to power and how appropriate it is that it turned to ashes in the Republicans' mouth in, uh, in 2006 and 2008. And we've all heard the politicians talk about the terrible things that are happening in Washington and, uh, and in the state capitals. And they say there's a cesspool in the state capitol. There's a cesspool in Washington. Send me up there and I'll take care of it. I'll clean up that mess. And we hear them and we say, that's a pretty good idea. Let's do that. And after a while, for too many of them, maybe sometimes the vast majority of them, the message comes back after a while, big mistake. I'm sorry, it's not a cesspool, it's a hot tub. And they love it. <laughs> the, uh, of all the mistakes that we have made in the last uh, 15, 20 years as conservatives, number one, in my opinion, is that we became an appendage of the Republican Party. We became an arm of the Republican Party. And now the number one need we have is for new leadership, leadership unfettered by old ties and old relationships. When I got involved in politics in, uh, 50 years ago in Houston, uh, the conservative movement rested on a two-legged stool. And a two-legged stool is not very sturdy. We'd get 40, 45, 47 percent of the vote. Very seldom did we get 51 percent. But in the late 70s, we added a third leg to that stool, and that's the social issues and Judeo-Christian values that have stood our country in great stead for 200 plus years. And that changed everything. We began to win elections. We won three landslide elections for president in the 1980s, but we're not governing America. And uh, now with the arrival of the Tea Party, we have a fourth leg. And in many ways, the Tea Party has similarities to the other three legs of the conservative movement, but you're very, very different in one area. And that is critical. When Reagan ran for president in 76 against the Republican establishment, Nixon, Ford, Rockefeller, he talked about the need for new leadership, leadership unfettered by old ties. The Tea Party is unfettered, and you need to stay that way. Don't become an arm and appendage of the Republican Party, as too many of my conservative friends have. Uh, in many ways, I think the... Uh, conservatives are like the biblical Jews who had to wander through the desert for 40 years until that generation of failed, uh, flawed leaders had passed from the scene. And we're not going to get to the political promised land until we get new leadership in Washington and the state capitals, and that's only going to come from uh, the Tea Party. The, uh, by the way, uh, leadership does not start with Mark West or congressmen, or governors, or senators. It starts with each one of you here. You're going to be able to have the opportunity to save America, but nobody else is going to do it. It's only going to come from, uh, from the Tea Party people. And as Mark was saying, the leadership has to start with you. If you don't get involved, quite frankly, we're not going to do it. It's easy for these uh, Republican politicians particularly to stand up here. You see a lot of them running for president now, attacking Obama. That's easy. That's easy to do, attack the Democrats. Where were they in uh, the 1990s and 2000s when the Republicans were growing the government massively? They were silent, and that's why we have the, uh, the problems that we have now. Democrats would not be in office in, in the White House 
And there wouldn't have been an office the last four years in Congress if it hadn't been for, uh, for the Republicans. So when these people talk to you about, uh, you know, attacking the Democrats and sharing values with you, among many things to look and see if they are principled conservatives, look to see who they walk with. Tell me who you walk with, and I'll tell you who you are. I saw Reagan a lot in the 1970s as he was uh, governor and campaigning, but I never, ever saw him except I saw my friends around him. I saw Lynn Knopfsinger and uh, Ed Meese and Judge Clark and Marty Anderson uh, and uh, uh, Paul Laxalt, and conservatives were all around him. So it was natural when he moved into the White House, conservatives would move in with him. Not enough, but many did. So that uh, now when these presidential candidates sh seem to share values with you, look around them. Do you see anybody you recognize as a well-known conservative? If we don't walk with them now, why do you think they're going to bring conservatives into the White House uh, once they're uh, elected, if that were to be the case? And personnel is policy, remember. I don't care what they promise you. If they don't surround themselves with conservatives, our issues are out the window and, and gone. The, uh, you know, the, uh, we, we've seen something that's very concerning in the last uh, few months. We've had some governors doing great things, John Kasich in Ohio, Scott Walker in uh, Wisconsin, Rick Scott in, uh, in Florida, but their poll numbers are sinking, you know, and we've got to change the narrative in this country. For 80 years, starting with Roosevelt, their narrative in this country was government is great, government is good, government got us out of, this is not me, this is narrative out there, of course, government uh, got us out of the depression, government won World War II, government educated the GIs when they came back, it built, they built the super highways, they gave us Social Security, Medicare, etc., you know, and people were not prepared to believe that, as Ronald Reagan said, government is not the solution, government is the problem, government taxes too much, spends too much, regulates too much, governs too much, okay, now, with Barack Obama, we have a chance to change that narrative. And it's a small window. And if we don't change that narrative, we're going to lose our country. Because if you lose the culture, and we have lost the social culture, and we're in danger of losing the economic culture. And that's where you Tea Party people are so important. You can, you know, involve yourself in putting together uh, uh, book clubs and educational uh, groups here and working with your colleagues and your, your neighbors and your co-workers, your members of your church. We've got to get out there and change the economic culture in this country or people are not going to return uh, conservatives uh, uh, to office here. So we've got to change the economic culture in this country and it's only going to happen because of you. I guess I'm getting close to my time here. I've got so much more I wanted to share with you. But let me uh, share one thing that is particularly important. In uh, 2009, and for most of 2010, every time I spoke, I paraphrased James Carville. Remember James Carville, <laughs> Clinton's advisor? In 1992, when he's advising Clinton, he says ad nauseum over and over and over, it's the economy, stupid. It's the economy, stupid. Because he wants to drive home the point to the Democrats to stress the economy. And I say to conservatives, it's the primaries, stupid. It is the primaries. Because in 2009, 2010, we could all see this wave coming that's going to sweep the Democrats out. And if all it did was sweep in the big government Republicans that had caused so many of our problems, we would have wasted the opportunity of a lifetime. And so we succeeded, not as much as we wanted, but we had a lot of success in 2010. That same opportunity is going to be here in 2012. And so it's the primaries, and we've got to change the narrative in 2011, 2012, run candidates that are principled constitutional conservatives at the uh, local level, state level, uh, federal level. And we can change America. It's just the beginning of it, remember, because all these institutions that are very, very powerful are arrayed against us. And so we've got a long, long battle. But let's, uh, let's start now. Uh, there was a popular movie 20 or so years ago called The Blues Brothers. And uh, in The Mo Blues Brothers, I see you <laughs> remember it. They had two themes in The Blues Brothers. We're going to get the band back together again, and we're on a mission from God. All right? <laughs> So, Tea Partiers, we're on a mission to save our country. 
and hopefully we're on a mission from God. Thank you, and I'll see you at the revolution.